Most of my time is spent doing creatures and characters and I often forget how much fun it is to create something like a big cityscape. And I normally would do that in Cinema 4D or Blender or Maya, but it's great now we could just do things like this in Nomad Sculpt on the iPad. So this is a cityscape made out of low polygon shapes, so just primitives, cubes and cylinders and some basic, basic shapes. And we just make the whole city and repeat it over and over again so we get this cool landscape. So let's have a look how we would do that on the iPad. So let's start making a city then. So we need some cubes to start this with. So we're going to delete that sphere. So come up here and delete it. And we've only got the cube left. Now let's put wireframe on and we'll keep it on for the whole duration. Um, and we want it on simply because we can see how many polygons we're using. You can put it on down here at the bottom or from the menu up here from display settings. So let's adjust the um, number of polygons, first of all, because that needs to come down a little bit. So we'll go into, um, into here, topology. And we want to bring our um, box topology all the way down. So we've got it down there, literally all the way down. So it's literally a six sided polygon, like so. We're gonna make it a bit bigger and then shrink it right down like so. That's the floor. Um, and I've done this a few times and made a few different examples of this, but pretty much I always start it on a cube like so. Let's bring it down to the bottom like that. So we're right on the floor. Now what we want to do is just make a few generic buildings. I'll make a few and then I'll go to the main scene that I've made. So the easiest way to do it is just to come up to, to here and duplicate the cube that you've got. You can validate it now, which we didn't do with the other one. Shrink it right down and then scale it up a bit like so, because we want it to be a tall. This is going to be our first tall building. And rather than just doing, um, uh, you, you know, one big long building, we'll just make it modular. So that we'll call that a floor of, of the building. And let's give it a color now. So we'll come over here and we'll make it a grayish brown color. Don't need to change anything like the roughness or the metalness. Um, in fact, just actually, you you can just make sure that metalness and roughness are uh, what one's all the way up, and one's all the way down. So you've got a nice smooth finish, and then force paint all, maybe a bit too dark, a bit lighter. And there we go for our our first one. I keep rotating it by mistake there, as you can see. So just fill that in, and just make sure it's inter intersecting the ground. And then we'll duplicate that and we'll move this around here, scale it down. And this is going to be our representation of windows. So force paint that. And again, you don't have to be super accurate here because this is just, um, it, it's all going to be as low poly as this and just, and just using shapes. So that would be our window on the side of a building. Let's make sure we can have another one. Move it along. So we want two of them. So one, two, three. Just using the duplicate button there. Let's make sure they are level. I mean, again, I'm not snapping them, but it, w it would be helpful if they, they look quite uh, level between them. And let's go in here and let's have a look at um, which three do we want. One good way of, uh, one thing that would really help um, as you, as you know, as I've done this quite a few times, would be to put on the um, outline here. And the outline just, just would, would really help you see when you've selected more than one, see? So that means that you know now that you've got those two selected. If I could select that, that wasn't the one we wanted. So that's a good indication. So, so we've now got all three together. We'll duplicate them, move them to this side, like so, and then what we'll do is we'll duplicate, and sorry, to simple merge them, then duplicate, and then we want to rotate it, but we need to do this numerically now. So if you come up here, and if you look at Gizmo, you basically want to 
rotate this around. It's the settings for the gizmo that you want. And you want these to rotate around Y and you want that to be 90 degrees or minus 90, whichever you, whichever you choose. And there you go. So that's how you numerically adjust it. And then merge them two together. And that's pretty much that, that floor done now. So what we'll do is we'll get rid of, we'll make sure we've got the right cube, which is that one, plus we'll use that one up above. So it's, that now gives us one entire block, like so. So what we can do now is merge that. So notice we're only using simple merge. We don't want to use voxelization, um, which is going to give you a ton of geometry, um, which isn't going to be useful to you at all. So that now gives you a way to um, duplicate upwards. But what we probably want to do first of all is, is add another, you know, some, some detail in there. So what we can do is we can take another cube. Make sure the topology is all the way down. And then shrink it right down again. Gone a little bit too far then, so I'll just go back again, shrink it right down, validate it. Do this one a slightly lighter brown, and this will just be like the, the floor space between. Notice I left it in the middle of the of the world, so it's quite easy to to line everything up. So have it like that. And then we just simply join that with that. Now I've done two there. We don't need to do that one. We could just we could just delete this one, and then just start with these two. Simple merge them, duplicate them, and now just start building it up. Now it would be nice to have this as a repeatable. It would be lovely if there was some kind of instancing here, but there isn't. So we're just going to have to do it by hand until we get that. So duplicate and merge. Um, let's bring it up, duplicate, bring it up. And again, it's quite tedious if you are doing it by hand, but if you duplicate like so, it doesn't take long. Keep moving the wrong things here. And there you go, we're nearly there for our first building. Bring that up. I think we had a spare one in there. Oh, that's fine. Okay, so we'll just take all of them and we'll simple merge them and we've got one entire block. So what I, what I would do there is I'd just take that block, just move it over to the side so it's out of the way. Um, you can just straight away, you can use that same building and just duplicate that and then just flood fill it with a completely different color let's just try it with a like a concrete gray like so and then you can make that a different scale and bring it up and then it looks completely different it's catching a lot of light because we've got those um steps at every floor and we don't need to worry about the fact that it's not painted because it's um you, you can actually go in and just paint that now if you wanted to add, add some sort of like um you know definition you can paint the roof white etc but for now we'll just go ahead and we'll just make some more of these and see how far we can get so um we could make another one first of all actually and then bring it down in size scale it up a little bit i'll bring it right down like so make it an odd size this time and then we can just duplicate that, bring it up. And then we've got an even more random kind of build in there. We'll change the color of that a little bit. We'll make that a, another brownie tan color. Make that the same. And again, it just gives us a, a, a different kind of shape to the building. Um, because this is all about cheating the eye, really, and just, you know, just basically getting a, a, a look 
that we can use and repeat over and over again. So I'll do one more and we'll make it a little bit different. So I'll put some different shapes in it. So we'll just basically make a cube. Again, knock that down, change the colour, scale it down, and this one, we're, going, we're not going to do windows as much as, as glass in this one, so what we can do now is we can take this one and duplicate it. And we'll make these um, a little bit wider this way and a little bit higher this way. And then I'll change the color of this. I'll make this like a, a darker color. Duplicate it, move it. We'll merge them two together that across you're just looking for interesting shapes that's all we're doing um, we'll duplicate it again and rotate it so come up to your settings for your gizmo and you want to rotate that around minus 90 and then we will merge them two and then let's take that color there and we will actually We'll bring up the metalness this time and knock down the roughness and bring the brightness up. And this is going to be a little bit more like glass. You'll see it, it's, it's just a bit of reflection. Um, and then we can merge them two together. Like so. Duplicate, it's very mundane now, it's very boring now at this point because we're just doing the same thing over and over again. You can see now, this is much more like a skyscraper, it's got the, like the glass windows. You can see it went from certain angles, you can see it really well. Um, let's just make sure they're all selected, I don't want that selected, do we? Simple merge, duplicate. We'll make this one a lot bigger. Simple merge, duplicate. And you can see how quickly this builds up. It's not, it's not exactly rocket science. This one, um, it just gives us lots, lots and lots of visual interest really, really quickly. So, say for example, we we carry on doing this for another half an hour. We would end up with an entire city uh, city block, and then what I try to do is I would just try and put some vary, you know, try and vary them a little bit. So one, you can vary the height. Two, you can vary the colours, and then you can also select all of them, and you can possibly at this stage simple merge them. Or you can just duplicate them one by one and then make sure they don't look like they're in the same place. By changing the height a little bit. And that's the essence of it really. I won't I won't labour the point anymore because it you know because we're 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 already, you know, within just a matter of a few minutes we've already got a good, a good amount of, of buildings. So let's move on to a city where we've got all of these already built. So after a few minutes and a lot of duplication and the addition of one tube there, you can see a little tube that was used in the, in the center. You can see that it's that quick to build up uh, an entire city block and it, and it isn't that many. You can see the repeated shapes. And the idea now is that we've put two little cubes in the middle to make a road. And what we'll do is we'll populate it with some cars and then we'll populate it with some lighting. So a, a great way to start the lighting is to take the HDRI lighting right down, all the way down so it's, it's very, very dark. And then just start thinking about adding um, lights. So I've turned these off here, so I've got three lights already built in. 
And as you can see there, with, if I rotate them around, you, and you see the shadows coming, dropping onto the buildings. I've got different coloured lights, so it's showing different parts of the city. And bear in mind, I've still got the wireframe on there, so it's still showing you um, uh, what it looks like with the wireframe on. So you can just flick that off at the bottom. And you can see there, it looks much more realistic straight away with with that gone. And the darker, you know, you you, you can see these like the, the the shadows dropping across the street and things like that. So let's have a look at it when we populate it fully. Okay, to get it a bit crazy now, what we tend to do now is a couple of things. So one, we can we've turned the the wireframe off, but it looks like the wireframe's on there. And what we did was we go to post processing. We'd put on ambient occlusion, so that gives us some nice shadow. Depth of field, if you if you want this effect where it's, it's almost like what we call a tilt shift. And the important one is curvature. So if you put the curvature on and make both the um, cavity and the bump dark, then you'll get this effect. If you put, make one of them light, you're going to get this sci-fi effect. So, you, you know, you would only want that if you want it. You'll know You'll know whether you want that or not. And that gives you that nice um, architectural look, um, you know, not quite wireframe, but still stylized. And I've put loads of taxis, a couple of thousand taxis in there, but they are literally just cubes. So I'm going for a full stylized look here. And one thing that makes it look really, really cool um, is if you go into material settings here and you come, let me make sure I'm on the right building, first of all on that one and then what we want to do is we want to make material additive or blending this is new in this version and you can bring your opacity right down so have a play with those new the additive and the um look at that it's very very sci-fi um in, in a matter of seconds you've got almost like a a sci-fi city that you know that, that that would look good in any kind of wireframe headset you know if you were doing a tony stark kind of scenario um so let's have a look at that again and we can switch some of this off and let's go back to opaque but um in fact no blending and then make sure that opacity is right down maybe not all the way and there you can see now if we go above now it's giving us a nice stylized effect with seeing through the buildings so depends what effect you're after. If you want, to, you know, if you want to go for a very schematic looking um, uh, image, then what you can do is change the colours of, of the, the lights to the kind of colours that you want, and then don't forget you can change your curvature um, and that curvature, as you will see, if you change that to blue, and then change your bump to a blue. And you can see as I'm whizzing around now, you can see tra the transparency is on and you're looking through the building. So it's good to have the wireframe on at that point. So have a, have a mess with all of those settings and definitely don't forget to mess with the lighting because the, the lighting can look at it there, it instantly changes the look and feel of, of, of what you're doing with the, with the city. So that's how I'd go about making a, a low poly city in Nomad Sculpt on the iPad. It's a really useful technique because it's fairly low polygon. Now, if you were going to use this in game or in Unity or Unreal, then you probably would have to do some optimization. But it's low polygon compared to what Nomad is normally used for, which is the sculpting. So uh, if you are enjoying these videos, then please give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And we can let you know when we upload new content, which is every week on a Wednesday and a Friday. We're currently doing a lot of content for the iPad, for iPad sculpting, and also VR.